Okay, so one question I would have is, uh, and and you're the first Buddhist that has uh, ever even asked a question. My initial question or critique would be, seems to me that those, um, really all the Far Eastern religions kind of rely on an absolute that is basically impersonal. And the problem with an impersonal absolute would be that reality basically becomes either meaningless, nihilistic, or an illusion. And I'm just concerned that if, if we went that route, then it seems like knowledge would become impossible or, or we would fall into the situation that a lot of Far Eastern religions do, which is that knowledge is fundamentally contradictory. I think Buddhism, I mean, there's different types of Buddhism, but right. I, my understanding is that they, they appear nihilistic and impersonal, but I think that was just a mech, an inbuilt mechanism to avoid excesses of what they were trying to replace, which was kind of early Hindu kind mm -hmm. of traditions mm -hmm. that, that fell, into, fell into kind of idol worship, kind of attachments to rule and ritual. So people would just kind of, you know, paint themselves blue and attend going to temples and things and, and thinking that that was... Um, accessing divinity and i think that the buddha the context of the buddha's time is that he he saw the the dangers of that so he he very much kind of strayed away from any um personification or deification um and i think his his thing was well have a look and see for yourself i'm not going to tell you what you're going to find but if you follow my um instruction and my suggestion then you find out what that is for yourself and and then and so you do you hear of Buddhist monks and people that have followed the tradition that attain realizations and in their words I don't I don't hear their words as you know they're not kind of saying oh it's just a void and there's nothing there and and it's cold and selfless and you know they're often full of great compassion and wisdom but I do see why people get that idea and I but I think that like I say goes back to the historical context of the Buddhist time. Okay, let me uh, give an example of a question that would be more yeah. precise. So do you think that the world that's out there, uh, that reality, do you think it's fundamentally teleological or dysteleological? Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I think there's an instinctive nature to... Uh, I don't know if, you, if, you're, if you're, do you know, you're aware of Bernardo Castrop? No. Do you know this guy? Okay. Um, I think he, I think the closest exa uh, analogy would be someone like Schopenhauer. About Schopenhauer? Mm -hmm. do you, do you, do you yeah, know world as will and representation. Um, so yeah. The, yeah, the idea of the will, which is kind of quite instinctive. It's quite kind of, um, it doesn't, it's, it's not really teleolo teleological in the Christian sense. It's kind of like a striving, searching God or presence that's, that's kind of fumbling around um and through humanity it kind of awakes to itself but it's not that kind of you were saying earlier about with the trinity is yes yeah, certainly not that kind of um pre-existing attributes and qualities that, that are there before creation so yeah there's definitely a, it's definitely so so um, you're saying that con contrast to that yeah so god is a kind of process he's in process process philosophy yeah how do you know uh, that how do you know that to be the case um, and, yeah, well, I think that this goes to the kind of another split in ideologies. So I think in, in Eastern, in Buddhism and Eastern traditions, God is your, it's your conscience, consciousness. It's you, you introspect and in your own awareness, you find um, you, that's, that's your knowledge into God is the mystical approach. It's th through, through introspection and personal insight. So, so God is literally yeah. identical to my own consciousness. Yeah, your your kind of like your naked awareness, your your ability to to know to perceive. Okay, um, is, is 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 your is that's your that's mm. your Bible in a way for, for if you want to use that analogy. Okay, in is, that you find what God is through through knowing yourself. Okay, is God identical to your consciousness as well? Um, well, in the Buddhist sense, there isn't a self, so there's no I, there's no kind of me individual. There is, there is the universal consciousness that we all are. So I, I wouldn't kind of, uh, kind of claim that 
as for me as an individual i think to the extent that i access it i access you and everyone else okay but you said everyone else that would presuppose yeah. that there are other yeah. beings yeah well it, it's it's the it's the dissociation so this is the kind of um i mentioned bernardo castro so he speaks about dissociated self so there's a there's an over there's a there's a unitary self but it's a bit like um, DID, like you know, uh, dissociative disorders. The analogy he, he uses. So it's a it's a it's a self that partitions through a process that's analogous to DID. Mm -hmm. So if you're in this world interacting with me and other people, and yeah. the selves that are you're, you're you're saying are basically fractured versions of the one. Don't you see that this would fall yeah. into the same problems I was mentioning about Platonism earlier? Because we aren't yeah, the yeah. the super self. How do you know that there is a super self? Um, it's well, it's a kind of Cartesian thing. I think it's this idea that if I deny everything else, what can I not deny? What's the one thing that? The yeah, but you, you know that you, you know that the co any content of consciousness is, you, is consciousness itself. You know that the cogito is in multiple ways fallacious, right? Yeah, the the, the way it's uh, it's well, it's interpreted in different ways by different people, isn't it? Well, the way that it's stated I, I, by I, Descartes I, is fallacious, yeah. objectively speaking, right? I mean, in other words, to say that. Uh, I think, therefore, I exist is, number one, a non sequitur. The fact that there's thinking yeah. occurring doesn't actually give you metaphysical content. And also, it assumes things that have not been questioned, like time determination. So if Descartes says uh, there's an occurrence or occurring, that presupposes time, time determination. But that was something that was supposed to be questioned, right? But he didn't. It also presupposes linguistic philosophy, which... Descartes didn't question at that time either. So my point is just simply that I understand, I mean, I, I don't understand Buddhism the way you do or as deep as you do, but what I hear from you uh, seems to, again, just sort of echo metaphysical problems that I was outlining earlier in relationship to Platonism or to dualism. So any dualistic pro uh, philosophy is going to have a, a problem of relating the things that are totally transcendent or non-dualistic to the realm of the here and the now, which is the opposite of that stuff. And so how do you know that there's a super self or a super consciousness if you only interact with the flux changing illusory consciousnesses that are fractured in the here and the now? Well, I don't do I, I kind of. Fiction. So there's not a, so yeah. you don't have a way to know that God is identical to the process of consciousness. Yeah, but I could say, I mean, I could say the same thing to you. How do you know there's there's this uh, transcendent deity, loving deity that's kind of overseeing everything? It's well, I would make a transcendental, argument, I would yeah. make a transcendental argument and subject the worldview to the same critique that I'm subjecting your worldview to. And that is the argument, transcendental argument. You know, Christian metaphysics makes sense because there is a personal God who creates the world. The world has purpose. There are real distinctions in beings. The world is an illusion. We're not fractured parts of the one. I avoid the problems of Platonism, and I don't see how what you're saying avoids the basic problems of Platonism. How do you know yeah. that ultimate reality is pure awareness? On what basis do you know this? Um, be because it's the only thing I can doubt everything else. I can doubt. I can even doubt my own thinking. I can I can doubt all my perceptions, but I can't doubt that that there is knowing or there is a a, 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 a capacity to know. Okay. I can't doubt that. When you say, I mean, this is a version of a Descartes type of argument, so I see where you're going with yes. this. Yes, yeah, it's related. Yeah, okay. sorry. It's, do you not it's understand? Related, it's not identical. Do you not it's understand not that that proposition assumes all kinds of metaphysical things? It, it assumes that language has meaning. Well, everything does. Anything you can say does. Your goal was to strip away all the things that you think you know. And I'm saying yeah. that the same way that I critique Descartes' cogito, um, you haven't actually mm. done that. So you're still assuming multiple things that are metaphysically the case, epistemically the case, linguistically the case. So you haven't actually done what you said you were going to do. Okay. So it doesn't function as an uh, argument to prove the metaphysical claim that ultimate reality is um, consciousness in process. 
the other okay, thing well, then it doesn't function as an my, argument. This is, my, this is my caveat, is that, yeah, I can't, uh, lang- I cannot convince anyone or prove anything using language. It's a, uh, I think that this is the other, the other difference with Eastern religions is that you can go away and sit okay. up to a mountaintop and where you can, you can, um, come to answers. Whereas maybe in Western Christian tradition, it's more about, it's, it's a, it's something that can be, uh, codified and shared with language and that's that's not my understanding <laughs> okay so i'm gonna repeat back this sentence i'm not trying to be mean to you don't get your feelings hurt okay. it's an honest okay. question you said i cannot convince or prove anything with language does that sentence itself use language and attempt to prove anything Okay, it does. Uh, that's a sentence, and it is making an argument. It's making a claim. It, it's claiming the limitations of my arg- of, uh, of 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 language. Yeah, but um, it's self-refuting because it's yeah. a sentence that's a- attempting to convince or argue something using language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so your fundamental I, I argument agree. is self-refuting <laughs> using language to try to yeah. make an argument that language can't prove anything. Yeah, you're right. So you're right. Buddhism doesn't work. <laughs> when you say yeah. when you when you say will, when you say consciousness, when you say searching, working itself out, these are all metaphysical claims. And the point yeah. the point yeah. uh, the the point of let's strip all that away and boil it down to basics philosophy, which is what I'm fine with doing, questioning it all the way down to yeah. the basic assumptions. Those are all things yeah. that you haven't questioned because those are metaphysical claims. And if, if we're gonna make these grand metaphysical claims, we're gonna to have to start from the basics and build up to that. But we haven't got any place to even set our foot down. We, we need something to start with. Thank but you, that man. would be my um, critique of, yeah, that approach. So that would be why I think Christianity is a better way to ground metaphysics, ethics, and epistemology.